Kitties, 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 welcome. Last video lesson for chip. It's chapter four. We're going to talk today about solving equations for y. So it's going to do a little bit of stuff we did actually in chapter three. Not really going to work with ratios and proportions, uh, but is a skill we're going to need for the next couple chapters. So let's jump right into it. All right, so a large portion of this class is going to include graphing, graphing equations. Um, we're going to look at different types of graphs, different types of functions. Um, and you've, if you remember back to chapter one, we've already talked about what inputs and outputs and functions are. So remember, a function is basically taking um, inputs and plugging it into some sort of function, which I represent them as, as a machine, and what you get is some sort of output out of it. Okay, So a lot of things we're going to do are going to be based off of this idea of a function. So our goal for today is really to learn a skill that we're going to need in the next couple, couple chapters that's going to make graphing a lot easier. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to try and take an equation that looks like this. 2y plus 4x equals 12. Notice how I have an equation with my output, which normally we call y, and our input at x. So we have an equation that includes both y and x and saying it's equal to 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take this equation, 2y plus 4x equals 12, and get it so that it looks like this. We're basically going to take it and solve for y, try and get y by itself. Uh, because this is going to really just make things a lot easier for us when we try to graph things, especially our next chapter, which is going to focus on lines. Uh, it's just going to make things a lot easier for us. Okay, so how do we solve for y? Well, basically, you're going to use the same skills we learned in Unit 3. Remember, Unit 3 is how we solved equations. So the key thing you're going to do here is by using inverse operations. Okay, and we're going to basically try and solve for y. Try and get y by itself by doing some inverse operations. So here's what I mean. If I take a look at the first example, I have 2y equals 4x minus 10. So if I look at this, I'm going to try and get y by itself. So my goal is to isolate the y. All right, so how am I going to do that? Well, I look at 2y. In order to get the y by itself, I need to get rid of this 2. So how do I do that? Well, what does 2y mean? This really means 2 times y. So if I want to undo that, what I'm simply going to do is take this and divide by 2. That's going to cancel out the 2 on top and the 2 on bottom. But remember with equations... No matter what's on either side, if I do something to one side, I must do it to the other. So i got to take and divide this side by 2. But notice that there are two terms here. There's 4x and the minus 10. So I'm going to divide the entire equation, or side of that equation, by 2. Now, I'm going to take this in steps here, but what, what does this mean? This means 4x minus 10 divided by 2. So if you remember back, we kind of talked about this briefly in, in section or, or chapter 1, I'm sorry. But when I'm doing this, I'm basically taking 4x and dividing that by 2, and I'm taking negative 10 and dividing by 2. So what I can do separately is I can say that y is going to equal 4 divided by 2x, or 4x divided by 2, minus 10 divided by 2. And what that's going to allow me to do is allow me to simplify things. Because if you look, what's 4 divided by 2? Well, 4 divided by 2 is simply 2. So I now have 2, and then I still have the x. Minus 10 divided by 5 is 2. So I got minus 2. So this equation simplifies to y equals 2x minus 2. Although what we started with and what we ended with look a lot different, they mean the same thing. What I did in example one is exactly what you're going to be doing uh, in this section, is trying to solve for y. Next example, I have 5y plus 40 equals 20x. So what I'm going to try and do is get y by itself. Notice how I have 5y and the plus 40. So in order to solve for y, I need to get rid of both of these things. So I'm going to start first, if you remember what I told you, think about Drake, start from the banaye, right? I'm going to start the order of operations, I'm going to start from the bottom and work with addition and subtraction first. So the inverse of positive 40 or plus 40 is going to be minus 40. So I'm going to take and subtract 40 from each side. Okay, I've put this line here just so we know. It's going to cancel out on this side and leave me with just 5y. The other side is going to equal, well, 20x minus 40. Can I subtract these two? 
And the answer is no, because they're not like terms. 20 has an x, 40 does not. So I'm going to leave this as 20x minus 40. Okay. And the last thing I have 5y, so I'm going to take and divide by 5 because that means multiplication. Now I'm going to do a shortcut way. Notice the last example. When I divided everything by 2, that just simply meant I divided each of the terms by 2. So I'm going to do the same thing here but with 5. Is I'm going to take 20 and divide it by 5 and 40 and divide it by 5. And let's see what we get. The left side you're left with y. The right side you have 20 divided by 5. What is that? That gives you 4. And you still have the x. Minus 40 divided by 5 is 8. So my equation becomes y equals 4x minus 8. Very good. Next example. I have 4x minus 6 equals 12. All right, so this one I'm going to solve for y. Now notice I have x and y on the same side here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in number 2. Even though there's an x here, I'm going to try and get y by itself. So notice here that I must get rid of this 4x. So here's where it's tricky. 4x is a term. I know that we're multiplying 4 and x, but what I'm trying to solve for is y. I'm not trying to solve for x. So I don't really care that the x has a 4 in front of it at this point. All I'm going to do is simply get rid of it and move it to the other side. So in order to move something to the other side of the equation, I'm going to do the inverse operation. So I see positive 4x. To move that to the other side, I'm going to subtract 4x. That's going to cancel this out, and then I can subtract 4x from this side. What that's going to give me is negative 6y equals 12 minus 4x. And then the last thing I can do is divide by, and carefully here, divide by negative 6. Okay, now over here I'm going to take and divide each term by negative 6 and divide this by negative 6. And that's going to give me y equals 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. And now careful here, negative 4 divided by negative 6. Uh-oh, you can't do that. So what we're going to do is just simplify it and leave it as a fraction. So notice they're both negative, negative 4, negative 6. So when I divide those two, I'm be left with a positive. And let me just simplify this. Two goes into each, so that's going to be a 2 and a 3. So this is going to be 2 over 3x. Okay, and I'm just going to keep the x. Notice I'm going to write this as 2 over 3, and I'm going to keep the x on the outside. So it's simply saying 2 thirds x. Now the last thing I'm going to ask for you to do with this one is I'm going to ask you to rewrite this. What I like to see, notice the other two examples, I always like to see y equals my x term first followed by my number. So 2x minus 2, 4x minus 8. So I'm going to rewrite this such that the x comes first. So I'm going to say y equals, now notice it's positive 2 thirds x, so I'm going to leave that as just 2 over 3x. And notice how the second term is negative 2, so I'm going to write that as minus 2. So my final answer I'm going to write in a good order with x first, and that's what I'm going to get. All right, now next, I have three examples for you to try, so I want you to pause the video, take each of these, and solve for y. Notice that these three examples model the same thing that we did up here, so if you need some guidance, check the example above. Here we go. You pause it, give these a shot, the answer will pop up in just a second. All right, hopefully you pause the video here, the answers for these problems. First one, just had to divide by 5. And then notice again, I divided each of the numbers, 10 divided by 5, 25 divided by 5 gives me 2x plus 5 is going to equal y. Next one, just like the one above it, I had to get rid of the 20 first, so I added 20. I did not combine these two because they are not like terms, so I left them as is. Then I left 5y equals 15x plus 20, divided by 5 on each of these, and got y equals 3x plus 4. Last one, a little sassy here, I had to subtract 5x, that kind of looks like a y there, so this should be an x. Uh, subtracted 5x to this side, I can, again cannot combine these, they're not like terms. But then I was left with negative 2.5y, notice the negatives in front of the 2.5, so I had to get rid of that by dividing each of these by negative 2.5. Uh, so 25 divided by negative 2.5, oopsie daisies, another mistake here, ay ay ay, this should be negative 10. All right, and then lastly, then I had negative 5x divided by negative 2.5. Negative 5 divided by negative 2.5 gives me positive 2. So my final answer, I just had to rewrite y equals. I took the 2, brought it in front, notice it's positive, so I said 2x. And the last thing I got to change here is this should be minus 10, not positive 10, so I apologize for that. 
Okay, so it's negative 10, so I brought it down, it should be minus 10. All right, so just taking our equations and solving for y. All right, here are three more examples. Why don't you guys pause the video here and see if you can give these a shot. Little different ones here. All right, so pause the video, give these a shot, ready, set, go. All right, let's take a look at what you got. First one, uh, some of these were a little more challenging, but that's fine. But this first one, I have x minus y. The challenging thing here you got to recognize is just remember that when you see these, this represents 1x minus 1y. So the numbers in front of those are 1. Okay, so what I did first was just get rid of the x. I subtracted x from this side, brought it across. That's going to give me negative y equals 10 minus x. Then what I recognize, negative y, i got to get rid of the negative. I want y to be positive. So I had to divide. Now, what is the number in front? And this is where you had to recognize it's negative 1y. So I took and divided everything by negative 1. 10 divided by negative 1 is negative 10. Negative x, remember that's also negative 1x divided by negative 1 is going to be positive 1, which I just wrote as x. So then again, I just wrote this in the correct order. So I did the x first. So I, x is positive, so I have positive x. Minus 10 goes after, so I get y equals x minus 10. Next example, I had all three terms on, each, on the left side and nothing, zero, on the right side. So I had to move everything over except for the y. So the first thing I did was added 21. Got rid of it over here, brought 21 across, get 2x minus 3y equals 21. Then I got rid of the x, so I subtracted 2x, brought it over here. You get 3y equals 21 minus 2x. Again, I'm realizing all these mistakes that I'm making today. Oh my gosh. Notice here, this should be negative 3y. So then what I did is I divided by, should have been negative 3. Big dog's making some mistakes here, folks. How is that going to change the problem? Well, negative 3 over here cancels out, leaves me with y. 21 divided by negative 3 should be negative 7. And then last one, I got negative 2 over 2x over negative 3, so dividing that. I can't divide these two numbers because 3 isn't going to 2, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. I have negative 2 divided by negative 3. This last one should be positive, so I apologize. So how does my answer change? It should be y equals positive 2 over 3x minus 7. So let me rewrite this for you. Y equals 2 over 3x minus 7. Whoopsie daisies, okay? All right, and last one. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here, but I get 6x equals 7y plus 6x. So I'm going to work over here because y is on the right side now. Not a big difference. We've solved the equations with y or x on the right side. So I'm going to take and get rid of the 6x by subtracting it across. So I subtract 6x, bring it over here. Notice this cancels, but over here I get 6x minus 6x. Also cancels. So what's left over? Remember, this does not mean no solution right here, but this just says that it's 0 on that side. So I'm left with 7y equals 0. A lot of you like to freak out at this one here when you see that. But remember, I can divide by 7, and I'm going to get y equals 0. 0 is a number. That's perfectly fine. So what I get here is that y equals 0. We'll talk about what that means graphically, but that certainly works. It's just the x and the numbers cancel out, and you're left with that y is equal to nothing, y is equal to 0. All right, folks, I know this is a little different, hopefully maybe a little bit challenging for some of you, so if you have any questions, make sure you jot them down. Otherwise, I'll see you in class, and good luck on the practice problems and then the mastery check. Peace out, kiddies.